Hello, brothers and sisters, this is Tina. It's time for a daily devotional. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about incarnation. I don't know if you ever heard that term or that word incarnation, but it refers to God become flesh. And so we're going to read a passage of God's words. God says, Incarnation means that God's spirit becomes a flesh. That is, God becomes flesh. The work that the flesh does is the work of the spirit, which is realized in the flesh, expressed by the flesh. No one except God's flesh can fulfill the ministry of the incarnate God. That is, only God's incarnate flesh, this normal humanity, and no one else can express the divine work. If during his first coming, God had not possessed normal humanity before the age of 29. If, as soon as he was born, he could work miracles. If, as soon as he learned to speak, he could speak the language of heaven. If the moment he first set foot upon the earth, he could apprehend all worldly matters, discern every person's thoughts and intentions, Such a person could not have been called a normal man, and such flesh could not have been called human flesh. If this were the case with Christ, then the meaning and the essence of God's incarnation would be lost. That he possesses normal humanity proves that he is God incarnated in the flesh. The fact that he undergoes a normal, human growth process further demonstrates that he is a normal flesh. Moreover, his work is sufficient proof that he is God's word, God's spirit become flesh. Amen. This passage is very clear, meaning the incarnation means that God's spirit becomes flesh. He becomes a man, right? He's born of man. The work that the flesh does is the work of the Spirit of God. God is a spirit, and we can't see a spirit. We're human. We live in the material world. God is a spirit which is in the spiritual world. So, God, being able to work amongst man, he can become flesh. We cannot become a spirit, right? But God, he can become a man. He can be a spirit because he can do all things. And only God's flesh can fulfill the ministry of the incarnate God, meaning of God's work he needs to do on the earth amongst mankind. And God's flesh has normal humanity. Normal humanity means he's born of man. He has normal human emotions. He's a normal human being. He's constrained to the earth like we are. He can be killed. He feels pain. He has to eat, things like that. That's normal humanity. So God become flesh is being able to put the divine language into human language. And we can see that in God's words, it gives example. If if during the first coming, God had not possessed normal humanity before the age 29, or when he was born, if he could do miracles as a child, as soon as he was born, or if, as soon as he learned to speak, he could speak the language of heaven. Or um, he could discern people's thoughts and things like that right away. He could not have been called a normal man. That would be something that's supernatural that is not normal humanity. Right? So that flesh could not be called human flesh if it had those attributes. But since Christ had normal humanity, he could not cast out demons and heal the sick and do miracles as a young child. He could not discern every person's thoughts, you know, at a certain age. He had to mature to be able to take on the divine work because, you know, if he could do those things at a young age, then the meaning and the essence of God's incarnation would be lost. So the fact that he possesses normal humanity proves that he is God in the flesh, right? God incarnated in the flesh. Having a normal human growth process shows that he was normal human flesh. (laughs) Jesus had, he was born as a baby. You know, he grew up, had the normal 
growth process, the normal learning process. And so it shows that he is God's word, God's spirit become flesh. Incarnation is very important to understand because when it comes to Christ or the incarnate God, or as we would know him as the son of man, it means God being born of man. So when we look at the prophecies of the second coming, the coming of the son of man, the son of man comes, the son of man be in his day, that is saying that God is going to become flesh a second time because that is referring to the incarnate God. So this is something that's a mystery that only God himself can reveal that has been unknown to man for thousands of years. It's a great thing that we can understand this and we have to understand it because when the Lord returned in the last days, how would we ever be able to know him if we couldn't understand this mystery? And in Daniel, it tells us our knowledge will increase. So <laughs> our knowledge has to increase so we can have a deeper understanding so we can be able to follow God. So I think this passage of words is very important. Understanding the incarnation is also very important. If you'd like to learn more about the incarnation, if you'd like to learn more about the Lord's second coming, please do contact me and I'll be glad to add you into one of our sermons. We have sermons in messenger all the time. Also, if you have any comments, you want to comment on this passage of words, um, please feel to, free to do so in the chat box. And that's all I have for today. And so um, I hope to see you next time. Um, God bless you and have a wonderful day. Bye.